In this presentation, we will take a look at a cash payments journal for a service company. The cash payment journal will be dealing with transactions where we have cash payments. That's going to be the factor that will be the same for all transactions with cash payments, meaning this column here, cash payments, will always be affected with the cash payments journal. Cash payments journal will be used when using more of a manual system rather than an automated system. However, it's good to know what the cash payments journal is, even if using an automated system, because it's possible that we, or it's very likely, that we would need to run reports that will be similar in format to a cash payments journal. And it's useful to see this format or how different types of accounting structures can be built, different types of systems can be run, because that will give us an idea of how uh, some things will be the same and different, and therefore how any system works. The cash payment journal will work best when we have uh, transactions that will be really the same throughout the time period, meaning we know that there's going to be a lot of things that we can spend cash on, and we'll take a look at a lot of different factors that we spend cash on. But if we have transactions where we typically have the same thing that we spend cash on, in the case of a service company, it might be something like purchasing supplies, then this type of journal will be very effective because we can have a similar transaction that we will record all the time throughout the, that process. If we are always paying off something on account, then accounts payable is another typical type of transaction. We're going to look at a lot of different transactions because obviously cash can be involved in uh, many different areas within the cash pay when, when we record transactions. And the ones that are unnormal, the ones that are not normal, are the ones that are typically more difficult in test taking situations and in practice. So we'll take a look at an example of items where we don't have the uh, column laid out and we've got to put it into other over here. And then we'll be dealing with that at the end of the process and how to break that out when recording it to our accounting system. So here's going to be our cash payment journal. Once we're done with all this, we'll do this for the entire month. And at the end of the month, then we'll make one transaction. That's what's going to simplify the process within our general journal as opposed to having every transaction that we will enter into the payment journal be its own general journal that would then be posted out during or through the time period in our case the month note it is possible to do this for for different types of time periods for a month a week a day uh, but the same process will be the same. We're going to enter the transactions into our journal and then record the totals into the general journal, making then the general ledger, recording the general journal to the general ledger, and then creating the trial balance from that. So here's going to be our transactions. We'll go through the transactions for the cash payment journal, starting with the purchased a truck for cash of 5000 so we'll just list this through here. We're going to say the date is going to be 7-5. We're going to say the purchase truck. We're going to give some kind of explanation here. Uh, and it might be if we had a name of something that we purchased, like a vendor, then that would be relevant there. And we're always going to have something in the cash column because we're dealing with the cash payment journal. And cash is going down. Therefore, we're just going to label it a credit. So rather than having a debit and credit column, we're just going to say it's going to be in one line item. And then we'll have the credit here. The other side of it's going to be going to other in this case. And what we're going to do is show all the types of transactions where cash goes out instead of just the normal transactions, which would be typically buying something like landscaping supplies. If we were a landscaper, buying inventory, possibly if we are a merchandiser or paying something off on account, uh, the cash payment journal, because there's a lot of different things we pay with cash is one of the more confusing journals. And therefore we have more columns. We could have more columns depending on how um, relevant a transaction is. If a transaction happens a lot, then we might add another column related to that specific transaction to deal with it there. And if it's not, then if it's a rare transaction, one that we don't have happening all the time, we're just going to list it into the other category. This other category then, once we do the journal entry, we will have to break out into its component pieces. Next transaction, we're going to say paid cash for gas and oil, $80. We're just going to list that off. It deals with cash, so therefore it belongs in this journal. Anything that says paid cash will be in the cash payment journal. So 7-8, we're going to say gas and oil. Cash is always going down. We will always be crediting this column in the cash payment journal because cash will always be decreasing. The other side, once again, is going to go to the other over here because... We're going to say that the cash payment for gas and oil possibly is not the most common type of transaction. If it is, we would break out another column for it. If not, 
we'll put it over here again the cash payment journal is most effective when we have a lot of similar transactions such as purchasing landscaping or supplies or inventory or, or paying off the accounts payable are going to be the typical two that the uh, cash transactions going out would be for next we're going to say in 715 paid cash to rent equipment needed for a job so we paid cash on 715 we're going to say rent equipment in the descriptions and once again cash will be going down by the 75 and we're looking for that other side of it and we will be putting it into the other category this being another type of expense and we can't really break out all the different types of expenses otherwise we would have way too many columns in the cash payment journal so we're going to list out those expenses over here and just put those really relevant ones the ones that happen all the time as their own uh, journal entry then we're going to have on 716 paid for a year's worth of general liability insurance 1000 so that's going to be on 716 we're going to say insurance for the explanation that's going to be $1,000. The cash is going down, as always, in the cash payment journal. Other side, once again, going to other. So we'll be putting it to other. It's going to be going to this case, prepaid insurance. And notice we're, we're listing out basically the other account here, in, in essence. So when we said it's going into other for a truck payment, if it's a truck payment, the other is probably going to be something auto expense or something like that in the explanation gas and oil is probably or truck <laughs> if it's a purchase of a truck it's going to go into an auto not expense but auto as a fixed uh, property planting equipment if it's oil and gas that's probably going to go into something uh, like auto expense or something like that rent of equipment probably a rental expense insurance will probably go into prepaid insurance because we paid for it before we used the insurance so this description will help us to basically find the accounts that we want to post this to. And uh, in some cases, it just depends on how you want to record this. You could put the actual just account here and just label this account and put the account for the other items here. Uh, description covers everything. It'll cover whether we have an account there or uh, whether it's in, in one of these accounts that are one of the columns. And we could just put a description. Next one, 722 paid L, H, and G for purchases in the past on account $175. Cash will, of course, be going down by the $175, and the other side is going to go to the accounts payable. And that's one of the transactions you would think would be more common in that the accounts payable is going down. That would be an account that if we had a type of business where we purchase something on account and then make payments to accounts payable, we would have a lot of this type of transactions cash going down the other side being two accounts payable next transaction paid for fuel and oil on 724 we're going to say fuel and oil probably the same as gas and oil up here and we're going to say that it's for 40 dollars. and once again we're not going to list out all the expenses we will just put it into the other category for the expenses breaking those out when we make the journal entry at the end then on 7.30, owner draws out money for personal use, $500. We're going to call that owner draws. It's going to bring down the cash. Once again, as always, we always have something crediting the cash in the cash payment journal. The other side then going to other. This, again, being something that doesn't happen all the time. We expect that the draws will happen a few times, once a month possibly, uh, for the owner withdraws. Once we have everything there, then we can total everything up. So the totals are just going to total everything up. So on the cash side, cash is going down 500 plus 80 plus 75 plus 1000 plus 175 plus 40 plus 500 or 6,870. The 175 is going to be brought down. Nothing's in the landscaping supplies because we typically purchase those on account. But I want to list that here because for something like a, uh, a, landscaper they may not purchase everything on account and this may be their you know the biggest column that would be gone to for uh, that type of industry and then the other the 5000 plus the 80 plus the 75 plus the 1000 plus the 40 plus the 500 is 6695 once we have that information we can then record that to the general journal so rather than recording each of these as a debit and credit to the uh, general journal and then posting it we're just going to wait till the end of the month and break this out now this is going to be a more complex type of journal entry this way because the cash payment journal involves different types of accounts and we're going to have to combine them all together we'll start off with the cash going down we're going to start off then with a credit which is unusual but it's helpful to see when doing a manual system because that's the first account on our cash payment journal 
So for formatting purposes, this wouldn't be the best way to do it. But for formatting in terms of understanding the process, then maybe we would want to do it this way so we can go back and easily see how the form, how this journal entry was created. Then the next component will be uh, the accounts payable. So here's the accounts payable. It's going to be debited. So remember, this transaction means that we paid cash that's included with the cash credit here. And then we're debiting accounts payable, making it go down. Accounts payable being a credit balance account, us bringing it down. And then we're going to have to break this out. Now, we can't just uh, do debit this number because all of these accounts will be different. We're going to pull this from the description. So we're going to say the explanation here says it's purchased of a truck. So we're going to put that into the fixed asset of auto and uh, record the 5,000 will be a debit increasing the truck. Next, we've got the 80 and we're combining here the 80 here and the 40 because those will be the same amount. So the 80 and the 40 is the 120 that is going to be recorded here. So we're checking this off. It's going to go into auto expense. Next, we have the equipment rental. So equipment rental from this description for this 75. Again, the cash is going down. And that's included in this credit. The debit side then going to equipment rental. Then we have the uh, prepaid insurance. Once again, this is 1000 going down included in this number. And then the other side of it will be to prepaid insurance, not insurance expense because we have not yet consumed the insurance in order to help us generate revenue, therefore putting it into prepaid insurance. Lastly, we have the draws. So there's going to be the draws and um, we're going to put that into the account of draws. If we add this up, the 175 plus the 5,000 plus the 120 plus the 75 plus these 1,000 plus the 500, that will add up to the credits of 6,870, therefore being in balance. We would then record this to the general ledger. So we would record this item to the general ledger, bringing the cash account from 12385 in this case down by 6870 to 5515 We've got the accounts payable here. Uh, that is bringing the balance that it was at 2140 down by 175 to uh, 1965 Then we have the auto. So here's the auto. It went from zero up by this 500 debit to 500 then we have the uh, auto expense, the expense side for the gas and oil. So here's the 120, bringing it from zero up by 120 to 120. Then we have equipment rental. So here's the equipment rental going from zero up by 75 to 75. And then we have the prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance is an asset account going from zero up by 1,000 to 1,000. And finally, the drawings. Here, that's going to be an equity account going from zero up in the debit direction to 500. Once we post this, just like we would for most uh, normal transactions, we would then take this and use it to generate the trial balance. So we can see these same numbers here in the trial balance being used to generate the trial balance. There's the cash. Here's the prepaid insurance. Here's the auto. It's going to be an asset. Notice these are all in the assets section. And then we've got the, the liability account for the accounts payable, the drawings, the auto expense, so the auto expense, and the equipment rental expense. And so there is the process.